is everybody at timestamp zero? In three, two, one, play. So you alluded to earlier, but you didn't watch this as it came out, right? Uh, no, I, um, it was either several months later or like a year later. I don't remember. Okay. I know I didn't see this at release, but I see it. I see this season before two hits because two is when I start watching it as it comes Mm -hmm. out. Uh, and well, this show has a huge lighting issue. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see shit at night. <laughs> and there's that really funny press that they did for the last season that came out. And they show uh, Joe, um, Maya, and the actor that plays Eddie, I can't remember his name, the the big guitar scene. And they're all mm-hmm. going like this because they can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and for anybody asking, yes, this is totally a horror show. Yeah, it's a lot of things, but th- that's what it is. It's it's a lot it's of strange horror. things. It is. It's horror that's accessible to a lot of people that maybe aren't super into this genre. Uh, like, I would have no experience because my dad likes the show and he's not a big horror guy, but he got into it. I think a lot of people make fun of it for th- for the throwback, but it really is the perfect throwback to that more. It's not super adult, but it's just edgy enough for kids like 80s horror, right? Like, or 80s mm. show. Yeah, like, I'm sure, like, stuff like Monster Squad was a big influence. Where it's, like, about these kids, but they're still swearing, they're still violence, they're still questionable material. And I think the D&D influence kind of makes it, makes it original enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of the big angle this show has. Like, obviously, d and is very popular and was very popular before the show. But as we saw with a certain movie in the early 2000s, didn't have the best track record with adaptations. So this does feel like kind of a, a, an important thing in making that popular, like, to a new audience again. Like, I, I'm sure this show is why a, a lot of, like, younger people now are in d and uh, And like you said, it's a really good backdrop for these characters and how that's like the angle the show has that I find unique and fun. That is interesting where these kids are really into D and D where it's just a fictional game with monsters and stuff. And they use that experience to rationalize and deal with the actual stuff they're going to be dealing with over the course of the show. Like that angle I is what I find more interesting. And I kind of, I feel like they lose that a little bit, especially in the later seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, like three and four, I don't think have any kind of like D and D. To them. four, four has a couple. Four kind of brings it back with Vecna. Yeah. Um, uh, but that's mostly with the villain. I mean, like the kids aren't using D and D anymore. Right, and to be fair, <laughs> that's just natural with the show growing up with these characters. You know, like uh, well, or the characters outgrowing the show. But we'll talk about that sure. when we get there. <laughs> Uh, and here's Karen Wheeler, who will feel like a completely different character in later seasons. Yep. And Ted. Hey, Ted, where's the corkscrew? Wish we were watching Friday the 13th Part 4 right now. Be a lot shorter. It's like, why did I agree to this? <laughs> <laughs> the Alien 3 review will happen still, but that'll probably be in, that'll be in two weeks. Yes, because next week is eighty nine. And as as they all look so young here, I know these tiny little children. <laughs> and it, it's funny though, like, we'll talk more about with ages how some of these actors, like uh, Nancy and Steve, like you know they're adults playing teenagers and they're passable enough. But then you jump forward a few seasons, it's like, oh wait, they're still supposed to be teenagers, and now they're like thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, it still so works because mo- those characters, by the time you get to four, are grown up and out in the real world. Hmm. Like Steve, Steve is is got a full time job. He's graduated high school. Mm-hmm. Maybe he doesn't look like nineteen, but it, it works well enough. Yeah, it's not a big deal. No, it's <laughs> the fact that like Dustin is supposed to be in, like a ninth grader, but he looks twenty five. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, this shot, that shot of him in like the garage, is very ET. Because mm. <laughs> obviously, uh, you know, as much as this is a horror show, it's also very, uh, very Spielberg. Yes, that's kind of if Mike Flanagan, it makes the quintessential Stephen King stories that aren't Stephen King, then this is like the quintessential Quintessent. Stephen Spielberg. Now, do you think this? Because I know a few people who think they should have just ended it here and made the same miniseries. Do you think it should have ended here, or are you fine with it continuing? There's enough stuff in the following seasons I like that I'm fine with continuing, and it is that tricky thing where I think this works pretty well as a self-contained miniseries, but obviously there's like the one or two dangling plot threads in the finale like and eh, maybe we'll get back to this if there's a season two so like it's not entirely a closed self-contained thing but i'm fine with them continuing it i also just even, think it's a little weird to expect something that was as big as this was because this yeah like people talk about game of thrones being kind of the last cultural phenomenon this this is kind of the last tv phenomenon mm -hmm. that we've had there's and, no way they weren't going to do another season Right, and at one point they thought about going more of an anthology route, where each season would be its own thing. Um, which could have been cool, have been but the worst thing. I'm fine with it. Yeah, it's a show where I like a lot of these characters enough that I'm fine with continuing to check in on them and getting more adventures. You know, even if it doesn't all work, I, I'm there's some shows where it's like, look, I, I'm just, I'm just having a good time. Yeah. I'm not. I think, because I have issues with some of the later seasons, especially two. Like, two is my least favorite. But I think if they're able to stick the landing with this last season, I think this will go down as one of the best, if not the best, TV show of the last decade. Okay, maybe not the best, but one of the best. Mm -hmm. Like, it's going to be more fondly remembered than Game of Thrones. Sure. Yeah, if they stick the landing. Because that can completely shit the bed. And that is, I will never not be fascinated by how it went from, like, the most beloved show on TV to everybody just remembers it's bad. Uh, yeah. The crew, of course, says 2 is underrated. That's fair. There's stuff to like in 2. I just, there's also stuff I don't like in 2. Mm -hmm. But I can see I, like I can see it being someone's favorite. We'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. What makes 2 interesting to me is, like, that's, like, the sequel season where it's season 1 again. And if that's what you want, then season two delivers. But there are people that are like, yeah, it's just season one again that, like you, may prefer season three for going more in a different direction and doing, you know, something that stands more apart. But then other people feel a little bit left behind. So each season of the show, just the reaction to it, it's so different and fascinating. It's a very strange, like, relationship the audience, the general audience has to the show, but... It's still popular. Maybe not as popular as it was a few years ago, but I mean, season four was pretty big when it dropped, so I can't imagine the. I, I feel like it's still. Care. I feel like it's still big enough that each time they release a season, it is like an event. But mm -hmm. this is the number one problem. This is the number one example of the problem with these streaming shows. Seasons, for some reason, take so long. I think I read the other day. I can't remember now, but like this, it's been ten years since this season almost. Yeah, well, this was 2016. So we're we're getting close to 10 years, and we've only had four seasons. That's insane. Mm. Yeah, that's the trade-off. It's like, look, if you want prestige, high-quality, movie-level television, it's going to take longer, but you can't well, pump out 20 I'm episodes be honest, a year. I don't know if you needed that, like... This season was a hit, and it's not any bigger than any other, like, TV show of its time. Of its time, you're probably right. I mean, if you uh, obviously use a time machine and, like, drop this back in the 90s, like, it would blow people's minds. Uh, it would be insane. But it is one of the shows where the budget gets bigger and bigger with each season. And to its credit, it always looks good. You know, it always has good cinematography. You know, there is a lot of effort put into the setting the set dressing and the 80s period piece like that stuff does take time to get right yeah no i mean i don't have any issues and like it's fine i guess i just i don't know like i think of season four and you know the big like epic concert that eddie puts on that 
probably cost a few hundred million dollars. Like, as cool as that is, did you need it? <laughs> and here's most of the world's introduction to, um, what the hell is his Harbor. name? David Harbour. Yeah, well, one of the, besides the kids, probably like the best discovery from the show, you know, this really seasoned actor who's been in tons of stuff that just nobody noticed. Isn't that how it always goes, though? You're kind of a yeah. nobody until you just hit that one project. Mm. Well, it, it's a little heartbreaking because it just makes you wonder, like, man, like, how many phenomenal actors are out there that get work but only have, like, two seconds of screen time and are just have, like, a line and, you know, that nobody notices or thinks about, but that maybe people in their personal lives know, like, this is an insanely good, talented actor who just hasn't had those opportunities. And David Harbour's, like, got to be that guy where it took until he was a middle aged to finally get like a really good meaty role. But the, and, and I do wonder, it. and I do just wonder if like he does continue to get those roles. Cause I like some of his outside of stranger things work that he's done since getting big, but none of them have been big successes. No. Um, I'm one of two was... people that liked his Hellboy movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that was good casting. You know, I don't think anyone blames him for how that movie turned out. Um, so I have mixed feelings on Jonathan. I don't like his writing sometimes. And it doesn't help that by season four, he's kind of just a caricature. But that will also that also becomes the show's biggest issue is we introduce like five characters a season and then kill one. So we're still yep. left with four more characters. Uh, this was also Winona Ryder's comeback. I hadn't seen her in yes. years. Yeah, she's our first. Her and Matthew Modine are like the, oh, these were like notable names in the 80s. And like kind of the stunt. This is like our first bit of stunt cast. Oh, these are actors who were somebody's in the 80s. Um, and, and really kind of gave us some legitimacy. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the E.T. dinner scene and you can't convince me otherwise. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I really like Jonathan early on. I like that he's flawed. Uh, I like that he's kind of a loner. Um, I like the relationship with him and his brother a lot. Um, I That actor, he's been in what? Like the New Mutants? <laughs> and that's Is it. he in that? I, I think so. I'm pretty sure he's one of the New Mutants. I think you're right. Well, and I mean, I think my biggest problem is I just don't think that, that actor is very charismatic. There's something about him I've I've always liked. Uh, he looks like he looks like uh, young uh, River Phoenix. Uh, I don't know if you're that familiar with him. He played uh, young Indiana Jones in the opening of Last Crusade. Uh, that's always the vibe I've gotten from this Jonathan actor. Is like he looks like uh, River Phoenix did when he was a teenager. Um, but yeah, like you're right. Like the big problem the show runs into is by the end, it's like we have a hundred characters to follow. We need to start cutting some. Yeah, he hasn't done a lot, uh, but he is in a real life relationship with Natalia Dyer, uh, who plays Nancy. Oh, good for them. And and I've always been convinced that's kind of why they do some of the stuff they do in two, even though I think it throws them both under the bus. Yeah, we'll get there. And here we have the Stephen, Stephen King, King bullies, <laughs> these psychotic, evil little brats. Um, the guy that plays Dustin, I'm not even going to pretend that I can say his name. Um. It's like Gaten something. Gatton. Matsura? Yeah, he's been in like one thing outside of this that I haven't seen yet. Um, the only one of the kids that's really been doing a lot is Finn Wolfhart, who is in everything now. Who is in everything. Hey, you always get one. There's always <laughs> one that, for whatever reason, just gets every project. And it's like, you. <laughs> well, to You're be a, fair, though, the, the kid that plays Dustin, I think he is more of a Broadway actor. Like, he's a stage actor. Mm. Um, he's very good. Okay, so, I don't know, because maybe I did watch this when it came out, but do you remember the whole Justice for Barb movement? Yes. I have never been so I... confused at the outrage over a side character that has maybe 15 minutes of screen time. There is so much to unpack with that. It's really weird 
like on the surface level because you're just like yeah it's a horror show there's gonna be some characters you like there's my die. boy like, yeah he, he doesn't I, quite have the hair the hair hasn't fully come in yet no but i think he is the most consistently written character and the only one that has like an actual arc um and i think the, the writers know it because he always has the best stuff in every season like if you put a character and I've, i'm convinced of this if you put a character that I think is kind of boring with Steve, that character instantly like just becomes better be- through Steve because he gets yeah. the better writing. That's, I mean, maybe we'll get into uh, final season, but we were just talking about our issues with Jonathan. It's like, maybe we should have paired those characters up more somewhere just because those are weird, interesting conversations those two could have, but those characters are hardly ever on screen. <laughs> I just you know, don't know how you do that because uh, we'll get into it more in season two. But you have the whole thing with Nancy cheats on Steve with Jonathan. Mm-hmm. They were on a break. and I don't care what anyone says, but they weren't. <laughs> like, I know the friends thing is memed, but like they did officially like set a break. Neither one of them said, I don't want to be with you anymore <laughs> in this show. <laughs> oh, it drives me nuts because this show is above that kind of writing. But it really feels like they just did that because the two actors are in a relationship in real life. Mm-hmm. But uh, back to the Barb thing, you know, like you said, that character has like 10 minutes of screen time and there's very little. There's very little that character on the page, but I do think the actress is very good and she brings a lot of personality to it i think she's the reason the justice for barb movement happens and why people are really upset about what happens to her and it's like it's tricky because it's like yeah it's a horror show like if you feel bad when someone dies then they did something right it's debatable when we see what actually happened to her later if they go maybe a bit too far that I think I can understand people being upset, but in terms of how they address the Justice for Barb stuff in season two, I actually think they pull that off without being too stupid or overblown. Like, I actually think they nail that. Um, if uh, you Wave Rider, how they it. real quick, Wave Rider says, I love Stranger Things. We do too. That's why we're here. Yeah. Join us. Well, and then it gets really funny because I feel like the fans fall for it every season. Because they do that every season. Mm-hmm. Here's this new character. I wonder if they'll be one of the four that dies. Yep. And for me, it stopped being effective after season two. Like, I really like um, Samwise. Um, John Aston. Yes. I really like his character. And then he dies. And then I was like, well, we're just going to do this every season now. And then they did. <laughs> Remember when they brought up Will's dad? <laughs> well, it's talk about choices, though, that could completely derail or change uh, the you entire know, course of the Are you talking show. about the original, like, ending? Yeah. With Steve? Yep. Uh, I, I guess we could talk about it more in depth when we get to that episode, but... The, the uh, Will and Jonathan's father was going to get the redemption arc and not Steve. And wow, like, it, it's impossible to imagine, like, how that would have changed the show moving forward. But I think I they made legitimately the right think, I legitimately think that the show wouldn't be as popular. Like, and this isn't just me saying, oh, you know, Steve is my favorite character, so I probably wouldn't have said, like, Steve is the most popular character on the show yeah. without, right. like, well, question. People like Steve in season one because he has an arc, because he has a satisfying journey. Season two on is when he's the fan favorite. Yeah. When he's the popular. You know, he becomes like one of the pillars of the show, like two on. Well, and and I have questions about Steve in this this season because obviously the whole thing with that ending is throughout the show. And I don't think they rewrote the entire show. So I think sometimes the show pretends that he's worse than he really was, or than we see him be. And I think it's a little awkward in places. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, at Weapon X...
And I think the show more often than not does a good job of invoking and reminding you of the stuff it's riffing on without just we're doing this movie now and we're doing this movie. Like it's like, yeah, like there's that feeling of E.T., you know, when the guys in the hazmat suits. But from a plot perspective, the context here is very different. You know, it, it it's not the one to one the same thing. And I think more often than not, the show pulls that off. Like it's a pastiche and for people who don't like that, like, oh, the show's too derivative and just watch 80s movies, don't watch the show that, you know, they're where they're being. And I, I don't it's like it, I can't agree fine. with that. There's enough uh, in this show that is unique that it's like, oh, no, this is worth watching. Right. Like what what the show has is Steve. You know, and other in a hopper like the show has characters I like that I've invested in. So whether we're talking about the highs or lows of the show, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, I still have characters that I like about. And that's what has kept me in where I can still say I like the show. Yeah, like I have a bazillion issues with season four. It's still like that one subplot kept me going. It was that good. Mm hmm. And here's Netflix's homegrown actress, uh, Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah, it's like Finn Wolfhard, he's in everything, and then Millie Bobby Brown is Netflix girl. <laughs> Got a Man. Netflix movie coming out, she's in it. Dude, I watched that movie Damsel, it was so bad. Uh... It legitimately felt like an AI script. Damn. She would have been a bad weapon. Uh, weapon eleven, not weapon eleven. X twenty three. Weapon eleven is Deadpool. <laughs> she wouldn't have been a bad Deadpool either. <laughs> she could have been. Uh, well, she could have been she, Kidpool. She was a really popular fan cast for a while for a uh, young Princess Leia and something. She looks a lot like young Carrie Fisher, and now she's kind of outgrown that. You know, she's kind of like her own person now. It's like, not not that I need a Princess Leia prequel movie, but I'm just saying, if you made one like five years ago, like this would have been good casting. I also don't know if it would have been. I like her in this show. She doesn't seem to have the biggest range. Right, and again, it's hard to say. Like, is that just the projects? The tricky thing with a show like this that's such a phenomenon, it's so big for the actors is you did it. You're on this popular show. You have this consistent paycheck. Like you're a part of this big thing. That's awesome. Getting other projects is going to be really hard while okay. you're committed to this. And then once this is done, it's like, who knows where their careers will go after this? Like you can never predict these things. Yeah. I mean, I think she has a pretty comfy future on Netflix original shit. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I like this teacher. I think he disappears at some point. I He might get an episode or two in the final season. He definitely has a bigger presence in the first couple. Uh, also, he shows up in Stargirl as like the same character. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess this is just what this guy's going to be playing now. I never did watch that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um... Maybe this is just the cynical side in me, but I have never met a teacher that excited to hang out with kids over a radio. And this is a real complaint. I'm just joking. I, I do. I do hope that uh, Gazin Dust in there has a bigger career. Like I'd like to see him mm. more stuff. He's a, He's a hell actor. of a singer. Mm. I don't know if you knew this, but that's really him singing in season three. Oh, yeah. Well, and with Finn Wolfhard, you know, he's the one that Hollywood plucked. And we're like, you, you're in everything now. <laughs> but you watch this show, like, you can see why, like, all these kids are good. But, like, man, Finn Wolfhard has to do a lot. <laughs> at a very young and He's age, always the very, same very character. Convincing. <laughs> yeah. He is the teenage boy. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I haven't seen Lucas in anything. I think there's like one movie he did with Idris Elba. One so at a cool. damn time. <laughs> yeah, this thing is great. 
No, I I love more cynical Hopper. We take it too far in season three. Um, we do, but his performance is so entertaining that it's never bothered me. So there's always two sides of me with something like that. The side of me that's like, this is really funny. But also the side of me is like, you're a this psychopath. Is your <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen the bloopers for that season? Oh, no. Show them. You know the you know that scene where he has to be like your grandma called or whatever mm. there's like seven bloopers of him just trying to get through that line it's amazing he would like be like your grandma and then like Finn would start cracking up or he'd start cracking <laughs> <laughs> and here we are in the woods I'm gonna see uh, a lot of woods so, in the show. one thing that makes this show kind of cool to me is I am a, a natural born like born and raised in Indiana. This oh, doesn't nice. quite look like Indiana to me, but different parts of Indiana. No, and like we're never in movies. We're just one of those states that's like, yeah, it exists, but like, you know, it's always New York or California. Uh, I think Will is the biggest casualty of the later seasons, having a billion characters. Name one thing that he does in season three. <laughs> well, he's got a couple good parts of season three. He just doesn't get to contribute much like to the plot. But I do like Will. It, Will early on is interesting because he's like, at the start of the show, like the 80s main kid archetype where you see a lot in those movies where it's like the leader or the main one's always like the boring generic one, but then the side characters are the more interesting ones. This show kind of flips that where it's like, Will would usually be like your main point of view character, but then he's taken out in the first one. And then it's just the supporting, you know, more interesting characters. And then Will becomes a bigger part of the show and we have to make him more interesting. And in some places, all we I think did they was succeed, give him the most, but they don't uh... give him enough to do. And the main thing that we did was give him the worst haircut ever met, seen to made cut. And I think they're finally dropping it in season five. I think. Teddy says, I don't care what anyone says. I like all the seasons, though I agree. Will isn't good post season two, I'm guessing. LOL, that stupid yes. heart was in the way. I mean, I don't dislike any of the seasons. I just, season two has moments that make me angry because I think the show is above that kind of thing. Hmm. Well, and Will, I mean, we'll, we'll get to it on another stream, but he has a scene I really like early on in 3, when he has kind of his breakdown w with Mike. Like, that's good stuff. Like, that's the stuff Oh, with wait, Will that, that is I season like. 3, because he's trying to get everyone to play D&D. &D. Okay, like, no, he I He wants take... to keep playing D&D, &D, and they've all kind of moved on. I take that back. No, that is a great scene. And I think that's yeah. kind of the first scene where you get, the, like, yeah, maybe, maybe he really is just not into girls. Yeah, that's stuff he hinted at it, but there's you also get a bit more tragedy to that character where it's like, this kid lost like a year of his childhood, basically. And is still like clinging to that, and that's something I think a lot of people can relate to, whereas the other ones are growing up and moving on, and he just wants things to stay the way they were. Uh, that's yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it's tragic both ways, because like, you have this character that, like you said, lost a year, probably more, because also season two, we don't know how long he was kind of possessed. Yeah, um, and they're taking him to those, you know, like, the clinic, like, you're doing the tests every week. Like, he doesn't have a normal childhood back. And then on top of that, all of your friends are doing something that you're just not interested in. Mm -hmm. Also, I love this guy. This is probably my favorite one-episode character, Benny. He's great. He's great. Uh, A.K.A. Taserface from Guardians 2. Oh, geek. Geek cinema. <laughs> no, he's the but like oh, with all the, all the justice for Barb stuff, like he's the one where when he gets killed, I'm like, oh, like this <laughs> is just like a really good simple guy that immediately endears you, like to what some of the people in this town are gonna be like. And it's a real, it's a real shame. And I, and I think one thing this season has he feels above real. The, and one thing that this season has above the others is like the main plot is simple, and it's not. It's not pushing that realm of disbelief like in season three where, oh, we're going to take on like an entire armed base of Russians and yeah. we have no weapons. It's 
this is one of those shows where you try to play that game of like, okay, if I remove these seasons and then just skip to here, would it feel natural or would I be like, what the fuck? Like, I, I can completely understand someone like, how the fuck do we get from here to there? And see, but and I have this thing with a lot of shows is I feel like for me, they become more interesting when we're just at that place where this is normal. Like, how far can we take this? Um, I'm going to use Boy Meets World as an example. I, I like that show quite a bit for what it is, you know, kind of a kid's sitcom. But I think that show gets really good when they get into college and it's just like, what stupid shit can we do this week? <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw that, but it's pretty good. Yeah, I, I just missed that. But One of the best, or, like, on-screen friendships. Hmm. Yeah, I think I was just too young when I was on. No, I didn't see it when it was on. I went back and like watched it later. Oh, gotcha. And that that revival they did was pretty good, and then Disney canceled it for like no reason. Oh. And uh, it, now in terms of like controversial casting, it's Joyce is weird because it's like she has a lot of fans who love her, and a lot of people really don't like her. At least in this first season, I like her a lot. I think her behavior is completely understandable. Like, I think she works. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think she's great. And I like she's her in other seasons, too. They just don't always give her the best stuff to work with. She's an overwhelmed single mom whose kid we're missing. Right. Do I think maybe they play it up a little bit too much with how she treats Jonathan? Maybe, but it's not. it doesn't ruin it or, like, break my disbelief or anything. Hmm. <laughs> and I really like that that's one of the strongest elements of this pilot to me is how they establish Joyce and Hopper's relationship you know their history and he's like hey kids run away like he's probably fine nothing happens here and like he understands that like when they find that bike it's like oh this is a problem now like they they do a really good good job conveying like oh some shit actually went down like this is and they and and those two <laughs> over the course of the whole show do end up having I think a pretty organic relationship in as, yeah. big... as far as shipped TV couples go this is one that makes sense we just don't get to it as fast as we could because we have to put Hopper and Rush for a whole season. <laughs> I cannot believe they did that for a whole season. It was like an episode I, long art story at best. It it could have been half the season. I, I mean, it, it could have been half the season. Although I will say that like sword fight with the Demogorgon was pretty awesome. Yeah, but that's a good crowd pleasing moment. And yeah, like Hopper is just like a really good encapsulation of the show as a whole, where he's this really believable, grounded, real person in this season that a lot of people can identify with. And he's not like your stereotypical leading man. Like he has a gut, like he's a little overweight. Like he's a very normal believer. At least guy. for now, and until then, we get to season and, four. And then he gets season four and he's sword fighting against Emicorn. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know if we earned this, but I'm having a good time. Danny, I get people who think it should have ended after one, but I don't agree. I just love this type of show so much. Okay. Enough about that. No. Yeah. Like yeah. we talked about this earlier. I like the see the other seasons. Like, you wouldn't have gotten the best version of Steve without more seasons or the best Correct. version of, um, we wouldn't gotten Robin. Who's one of my favorites. I love Robin. I like Robin. I think Dustin is probably one of the more consistently well-used characters. I think Dustin has good stuff. Well, Cause he's least. always thrown in with Steve. Who gets Steve, the best yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the, no, there's a web you can track who gets the main plot. Steve. Think about it. Season three. Nancy's storyline, not very good. Season four, she gets thrown with Steve. Best storyline. <laughs> now they now they gotta throw like Mike and, and Will with Steve so they have an actual like storyline. Yeah. Although I don't know if you saw some of the set photos from the new season. It looks like we're gonna get uh, a trio of Jonathan, Steve, and Nancy. Okay, I, I like that. I think that could be interesting. I'd like to see some conversations just, those characters could have. I just, so I'm sorry, but if out. they have to kill one of them, it better be Jonathan. I like Jonathan, and I agree. I think season... God, you're gonna hate me so much for saying this, because it's something I was dreading 
and didn't want, and then they didn't do it, and it's like, oh, well, fuck, did they make a call? I thought season four was really setting it up where Steve was going to die, and then Eddie was going to take over the Steve role for the final season, which would have been more bold and They would have lost a lot of people. Probably would have been a mistake. No, so I, I don't actually disagree with you. I did, I never had that. Maybe I was just in denial, but I've seen a lot of people, like, when the trailers for 4 were coming out, and you get that like, scene oh of, like, God. him with yeah. the, the Demogorgon, the bats. No, everybody looks like, oh, oh my God, are they going to kill Steve? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you care that much, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. What did I do? <laughs> um, no, and I also just find it funny that a lot of season four is like, yeah, we're going to run back the like stuff that we did in season two. Like, oh, you thought Steve was over Nancy, but he's really not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I can't tell who anyone is in this scene. They're just all shadows. Yeah. Holding flashlight. Uh, I've never had that big an issue with the lighting of the show. You just need... it. It If you've got white walls or a window in front of your TV, good luck. Because <laughs> you just... I have a particular enough setup where I'm usually fine with darkly lit stuff. Like, I can see what's going on, but it's a fair criticism. I've just noticed in a lot of streaming stuff, like the Hellraiser reboot, half of it you can't see because it's dark and streaming is obviously very compressed. Yeah, that's obviously a factor. Well, and then this season is the only one that doesn't have, like, HDR or anything. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, the hit movie with Jeremy Irons. Why does my connection keep going down? Sorry about the buffering. I don't know what's going on with Xfinity. It'll even itself out. That's why we record these as backups. I love walkie-talkies. Yeah, these are pretty cool. And these may have been around in 83. I, I know, like, the bikes or, like, the bells they have on their bikes, like, weren't around yet. And it, like, details like that bother some people. I'm like, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's set in a very specific time, but that's also... it's it, This show, for better or worse, like, it's just the 80s in general. They're usually pretty good about paying attention to details, but it's not striving for perfect authenticity and i love that steve, I, know, personally, I'm not I, sure that I love that mike catches steve sneaking in <laughs> and he's just like oh he's like oh adults oh mike and nancy have a very believable younger brother older sister yeah uh, relationship that they nailed that yeah so okay i know what he's gonna do later but this show expects me to believe that this guy is an asshole to Nancy. And, or not to Nancy, but to, like, everyone. And that he deserves the beating he gets. He does, like, one bad thing in this, in this entire season. Yeah, at most you can buy that, like, Robin's the character he, he just, like, never saw. Like, and just didn't pay attention to. But you never get that, like, he's a bully. Or is that bad? The you only... Know? Okay, so this is going to piss off Jonathan fans, because this is the other thing that I see is the camera. Jonathan deserved that. Oh, yeah, totally. I'm not going to argue with that on that part. Um, well, no, because I've I'm not used, but like I've seen a lot of people use that as an example of him being an asshole. I'm like, no, Jonathan took pictures of her in her underwear. That That is a fair reason to smash <laughs> someone's camera. You know, and embarrass them. Where Steve goes too far is when he jumps to conclusions and we get the movie theater scene. That's yeah. the big mistake he makes that he deserves. And my big problem with that is that we never get a resolution to it and we'll get there when we get to that episode. Because I have a huge issue with how they resolve that whole thing. 
I've never had a problem with that. And he's dead. Yeah, this is this lady is the first character I hate. Like, I hope you die because you shot Betty. And she does, and it's great. That's the other problem I have that Steve sub up to is obviously his friends are way more hateable and way worse people, and he that's just kind of the crowd he's fallen in with because he's popular. And then they never get their comeuppance. Like, and then they just disappear after the season. So that's a little irritating as a viewer. So <laughs> it's like, oh, come it's, on. Uh, it's funny, too, because the girl that plays Carol, his his female friend, she is a vocalist and did uh, background vocals on an Ice Nine Kill song. Nice. I did not know that. Yeah, it, the, it's their song to uh, American Werewolf in London. Hmm. But no, I do agree. But I, I don't mind them just disappearing because really the, the role that they played in his life was him dumping them so he can start that process of becoming a better person. Mm. I just want to see a Demogorgon eat him or something. They don't completely disappear, though. They Remember, in season two, they've hooked up with Billy. Or at least Tommy has. That's, that's probably true. It's been a while, but yeah, they, they might appear briefly. Because they're at the Halloween party, and they're like, they're the ones like goading on Steve, and him and Billy have the stare down. Because mm. you know, we'll we'll talk about it more when we get there. But Billy is supposed to be like the different path that Steve could have gone on. Mm-hmm. They just have great chemistry too. Yeah, and he's, like, a decent boyfriend, you know? Even though it's, like, I mean, if you've seen Scream, this could go a very different direction. (laughs) I will say, in terms of, like, TV relationships in this show, these two are probably my favorite, which is why I don't like some of the stuff in season two. Hmm. Um, I mean, it's not so like a high school romance. Like you don't really expect it to last, but like I understand. If it was real like, life, yes. But this is a TV show. That's where I kind of expect these things to happen. And, and like I said, we'll get in. I'll, I'll break it down when we get to the second season. I just think the way they do it really throws Nancy under the bus. And the only and then their their like consolation prize for C as well. We'll throw you with the ten year old. Because they're not, because nobody's allowed to have a conversation in the show about the actions that they've done. Yeah, that is a TV trope. This show does fall into several times. Like, if you remember, Steve goes to apologize, even though he's not really at fault. But the show can't have him do that, so he has to get sidetracked with Dustin. I think my Mm. food is here, so I'm going to go off camera, but I'll still talk. But uh, when I say I like Jonathan, though, this is one of the scenes why I, I really like his scenes with Joyce. And I wish we got more. Like, we get hardly any of those in, in the later seasons. Like, this is a really good, vulnerable moment for him. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, when we get to that final season, I, I think we need like a really big character death, uh, and and I do think it should be Jonathan. You know, something that'll be a real gut punch to these characters, but also deal with like the ramifications of it for a while. You know, but that it's just that is one of the main issues of the show. Is just oh, we introduced a character now they're dead. You know, like they do play it a bit safe. 
And I, which again, very sad because I like Jonathan, but I also think, yeah, if you got to kill somebody major, I think I think that's when you got to take out and to see the other characters deal with that. Steady Steve, douche season one, douche boyfriend. Season season three, a guy that's best friend with a a child. I think we would say. Oh, but again, is he, like, douche, is he a douche boyfriend in this? Not not until a later episode, but like he's a pretty okay guy for some of it. Well, and to be fair, I think it's I think some of that might be just because it is from the point of view of people he's not bullying. Mm-hmm. But I think it's I think it's that casualty of like this was supposed to be an asshole and like die at the end and you're supposed to cheer, but we changed course in the last minute. Yeah, like this is just meant to be a one season character. Okay, my food is actually here. I didn't see them out there. One second. <laughs> you're good. Well, and if we're talking like the series finale, I think a lot of characters are fair game. Like I, I could see a lot of characters not making it by the end of the show, but I'm talking like early season five. I, I think we need to lose someone big and then deal with that for a while, you know, but by the end of that show, like, I think we could lose Joyce. I think we could lose Hopper. Like, I, I don't think I, a lot of characters I wouldn't call safe. Like once we're at the end of that show. And uh, that's it. That is the vanishing of Will Byers. In my opinion, a very good pilot. Uh, I think it it's one of the best shows that's just hooked me from the first episode. Like it's a really 